Hey everybody, it is your girl Kiki and we're gonna um, we're doing Love During Lockup and we're gonna do it by couple. So we're gonna break down episode one and two. Up first is India and Harry. Oh boy, it's gonna be a doozy. everybody it's your girl Kiki uh, mom entrepreneur media person um, Texan artist and we are gonna do a new series we're gonna do love during lockup it's a new show that's on uh, we TV if you're not familiar with 90 day fiance and love after lockup life during lockup all the lockup shows I don't watch much reality but I do like the lockup shows. so um, Personally, I have dated someone who what, who has formerly been incarcerated. I've also dated um, somebody, and then they went into incarceration. But that was a long time ago in my 20s. Um, yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so so I have a little experience. I wish they had reality TV back then because I for sure would have been on there with the hijinks and shenanigans of the people that I've dated. I would definitely have um, uh, reality show material. But... Uh, Love During Lockup airs on once a week. Um, there's so far there's been two ep two episodes, two episodes, yes. And so what I'm gonna do is break down the couples. I'm not gonna break down do the recap of the episodes. I'm just gonna break down the couples, and and first the two episodes. I got my notes. I got my notes. The first couple we're gonna do is I call her India, but it's Indy and Harry. It looks like Miss Indy lives in Maryland and Harry is incarcerated in Ohio. Um, uh, she's 29, he's 23, not too much of age range. She has a child, um, I forgot to check how long he's been incarcerated for a couple, for a while. He has like aggravated robbery charges and kidnap charge. She met him on a TikTok video. Apparently he did a TikTok video or something saying, yeah, ladies, get at me, hit me up. Come get this or something. And then she contacted him through mail and they've been talking ever since. Okay, so episode one, you know, is basically uh, you're introduced to Indy and her sister. And Indy has a daughter. I think she has a nine-year-old daughter. Indy goes to some psychic lady. I forgot the psychic lady's name. But she basically goes to the psychic lady all the time asking about advice, love advice, or whatever. And um, Indy's profession says she's a makeup artist. Okay, yeah, I don't... All right, cool, bet that. Um... And so she's talking to her sister and telling her sister about this dude and they've been talking for a minute and whatever. And and I don't know, it's just bizarre. Like, it's just bizarre. These, let me tell you something. I ain't trying to throw shade at nobody on these shows, but some of these people, some of these people act a little, hmm, a little questionable in some of their, in some of their behaviors. And I'm like, a little bit on the spectrum. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just being honest. Um, so, you know, Indy has to, she has a gathering with her family all the time. They're like, they have like a game night. It turns out that Indy, her mom, Yolanda, which, please somebody get Yolanda her own show. Please, can we get Yolanda her own show? Y Yolanda is a Bales Bonds woman, a straight shooter. She seemed like she don't take no ish from nobody. And she is shocked to know that her daughter is talking to some guy in, in prison considering what she does for a living, which captures prisoners. So if anybody knows about prisoner, it would be Mama Yolanda. Mama Yolanda, we're going to call her Mama Yolanda because Mama Yolanda is, 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 I, I said, so it's a mom after my own heart, okay? So her mom, it did not go over well in episode one. She told her, my own mom was like, I'm going to find out about this dude. I'm going to find out his charges. I'm going to find out where he, where he stay. I'm coming for him. I'm going to pull up on him. Like, Mama Yolanda is ready. So in episode two, um, you know, the mom is having conversations with her asking how much money has she sent. She's spending like $100 a week talking to this dude. $100 a week. And she has a daughter. And then, you know, the mom is telling her, you know how these dudes be trying to finesse you for money and, and, and work on your sympathies and pull your heartstrings. And, you know, Indy's like, no, it's not like that. Indy's thinking about moving to Ohio um, to be with this dude because I guess the psychic told her that the dude was fixing to get out of jail. I don't know how the psychic would know. I don't. Don't even get me started on the psychic thing. It's not saying I don't believe in that, but I think, you know, you need to check yourself when you're basing your whole life 
on what a psychic is telling you. So, you know, her mom is like saying she's going to do a background check. She doesn't think she should be moving anywhere. Um, the mom pulls up Harry Harry's charges, which is aggravated robbery and kidnapping. She wants to know more. So the mom has a friend, a bail's bondsman named Damien, her partner, and they plan to go Ohio to get the 411 because we don't know, like the mom was saying, if Harry was involved in, in gang activity, he may get out of jail. Daughter, granddaughter moved to Ohio. He may get out and run with the same people he'd been running with because most time that's what that happens. And and then her daughter didn't waste all this time and energy moving halfway across the country, country for no reason. Uh, Indy talks to Harry about moving to Ohio. And to be honest with you, folks, Indy, Harry didn't sound too excited. He was just like, do whatever you like, do however you feel. And, you know, whatever makes you, whatever heart te tells you. And nobody wants to hear somebody, you, you finna move halfway across the country and they're telling you, you know, do what you feel, just whatever you feel like, just, you know, whatever you feel like you want to do, babe. Just it's all how your heart feels. Like it, it didn't sound like he was too sure or, and or too excited about her moving to Ohio. It just kind of like he was like, whatever, whatever's clever, whatever, do do your thing, boo. You know, like the way he was talking just didn't sound like a person who was really like invested in this relationship or uh, trying to tell her everything's going to be, oh, everything's going to be fine. Yeah, girl. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay. Okay. So I, you know, I have... You know, I, I haven't looked ahead to spoilers. I haven't read whether they're still together or not. I, I, I don't look anything. I'm just taking the show just just to recap of the show for episode one and two. So that's Indian Harry. Um, my thoughts is some of these people, I, I, I don't, they're spending thousands of dollars for these phone calls and commissary, regardless of whether the prisoner is asking for it or not, which most of the time I'm sure they're hinting at and asking for it. As to whether Harry is taking Indy for a ride, I don't know. But I know that when he's loved during lock lockup, life after lockup, these shows, these people never last. Unless they was with the dude or woman before they went in. And then they went into jail. That's a little bit different. But most of these couples just don't last. Like, like even, in, even out of a reality show, even in real life. I had a friend that was talking to a prisoner um, in jail. She was talking to a dude in jail for like two, three years. And he got out of jail and like basically like stole her credit cards, ruined her life. Like, you know, you, you hear about stuff happening like this or people are, are too embarrassed to really speak on stuff like this. You know, don't have, it's not, it's not that unusual for someone to date a prisoner. I mean, it's becoming more and more commonplace. And I think it's because it is, it be increasingly harder and harder for people to meet people and for people to date people. I think it's to the point where, where people are, there are people out there dating prisoners over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just because of the fact that, you know, they don't want to be alone. They don't want to be lonely. Um, and they're risking their money and, and, and even their livelihoods and their lives and even their kids. Like, how are you going to date somebody in prison? You have like a, a, a child, especially having a daughter. I, I don't know if I would really... I know, I, I, I can't say if, I know I would not be comfortable having someone around my kid that I haven't, I haven't done a background check on. I have, I, I don't know anything about, I've never really been around. And then this person gets out of jail and they're supposed to come move in with me and me, especially my daughter. Um, I don't know if my kids are even going to like them, but they're even going to get along with my children, especially if your children are, you know, and it, they, they teens. Um, Indy, I believe her daughter's like, she looks like she's about uh, eight or nine. But, I mean, that's just a situation that I wouldn't want my parent to put me in, and I would damn sure not put my kid in. My kids, no, no. I'm not moving anyone in my house that my kids are not comfortable with because they have to live here too. My kid is my number one priority, and some of these people on these shows, it's like their whole priority is finding somebody and being in love and having this cookie-cutter husband and wife and white picket fence it's like they're in love with the idea of being in love and they're in love with the idea of being married not knowing that you know marriage takes finances there's practical things in marriage other than just love and romance and, and warm fuzzy feelings and i love this person you love me love's just gonna conquer all i think some of y'all i'm gonna tell you it's not just these, these people on these reality shows i think some of y'all been watching way too many damn movies uh, Disney Channel movies, y'all been watching too much uh, Hallmark, y'all, Netflix, whatever it is that y'all be watching or what your parents be telling you or what you be reading or seeing on reality TV shows with these fake couples and their fake lives. 
I've been married. I was married for a long time before my, you know, me and my husband, we were married for eight years before he passed. And marriage is not easy. Marriage is not simple. You really have to find the right person for you. And there's other things. There's, there's money. There's finances. There's jobs. You're married. Somebody gets laid off. Somebody loses their job. Someone gets sick. All these things have happened to me. So, no, marriage is, is can be good. There's time when you're moody and you're not in the mood to be around nobody. You know, there's time when he's not in the mood to be around you and he just have to learn to work it out. And there's up outside pressures and outside people and family and friends that interfere in your relationship and your marriage sometimes. You know, things happen all the time that you can't predict. And, and, and it's not all about just romance and good feelings because... All those butterflies and those, 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 you know, those sexual attraction and all that, all that, it wears off over time. When you get used to somebody and they farting in your bed and they, they stink your feet is on your stink on your feet and, you know, and then you wake up in the morning, she don't, you know, I, I, you know, I don't wake up looking like this, y'all. I wake up in the morning looking like, you know, homeless trash bag victim. I mean, I'm serious. Like, it takes a while for your girl to get this look going, but. You, you you have to see a person with their warts and all to really understand what it feels like to be in love with somebody and to be married to somebody. And talking to somebody over letters, over emails, over text messages where they can lie and tell you anything and they talking to 10 different females or 10 different dudes and getting money from all of them. It's a hustle. It's a game. If I was in prison, I'd be doing that too. You think I wouldn't be on uh, uh, paper dials like this? I'd be like... I'll be all up on paper dolls, real talk, real talk, fam. You don't you think I'll be up there trying to get my finesse in these dudes and work, working my jelly and showing, showing my prison, showing my prison shoulder, just looking my prison shoulder. You know, I'll be all up on it trying to get money from these dudes. I know I'm gonna be stuck in prison for some years. I know my family didn't abandon me, and I need money on my commissary. Yes, I'll be like, hey, babe, God number one. Hey, babe, God number two. Hey, babe, maybe I maybe throw in a female or two. I have a girlfriend in prison and about six dudes on the outside. Whatever, whatever, whatever it took, you know, in order for, in order for you to survive. Prison is about survival. So, you know, you know, that, that that's that's how I'm going to start out. You know, this is my first episode. But, yeah, we're going to do other couples. But, you know, that's my little commentary because I just think that some of these people, I can't believe these are grown people. With, with I'm like, these are at 25, 29, 30 years old. I knew better. I, I knew the hustle. I knew the game. But again, you know, not everybody not everybody has that level of street knowledge. And some people just want to believe cognitive dissonance. Some people just want to believe what they want to believe. So that's India, Indian Harry. On Next week, we're going to do another thing, Indian Harry. And then, like I said, we're going to come out with other videos about other couples and give my rundown about the episodes and what I think, my commentary on these people. And um, that's about it. So y'all... Have a wonderful day and uh, stay tuned for uh, love during lockup. Bye. If I could say goodbye, you know, if my camera. <laughs>